the text messaging uh, part of Grower's Edge is very handy because uh, every day I'll receive a text that shows me uh, where the best local market is. That's what I like about Grower's Edge too. It gives me the information I want on my smartphone so that if I'm not in the office, I still get the information that I need. Good afternoon, welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills. Today is Friday the 27th for the weekly wrap up. Today we're going to be talking about the Planalytics winter wheat forecast here. We also have expectations for Tuesday's uh, planting intentions report as well as the grain stocks report and we also have the weekly cash basis wrap up. But before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about where we closed off the, the week here. Take a look at the Grain Hedge Trading Platform. This is a platform that you guys can have on your mobile phone view the live quotes. Uh, it's a fantastic tool here and a great uh, tool to add to your marketing plan, add to your marketing strategy. Uh, you'll notice corn trading down quarter of a cent to 391 here for the May contract. Soybeans down six and a half cents to 968 for the May contract. And wheat in Chicago up eight and a quarter cents here today. A little bit of short covering. And let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about that Planalytics uh, weather, uh, weather forecast, the, uh, the Planalytics winter wheat yield forecast. You'll notice that that came out today. And take a look at the right here. Each state breaking down what the yield projections are and where that is relative to trend. And you'll notice Kansas right now below trend. Oklahoma below trend. Over two, uh, uh, two bushels below trend. And that, I mean, Kansas makes up 22% of our winter wheat production. So that is very significant. Ohio also below trend. All in all, it looks as though Planalytics has in their first forecast, and they will be making these forecasts throughout the marketing year. This is based on the NDVI index, which is basically satellite images and the greenness. Uh, and they take that and they look at it over time, uh, and they have their own way of extrapolating uh, the yield here. And you'll notice uh, the yield 45.4. That's up 2.8 uh, from last year at this time, uh, but two, uh, two bushels here below trend. So a little bit disappointing. Uh, and right now, the biggest areas of concern when you look at the U.S. drought monitor is that Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas region. That's a, a very dry region, and it looks as though those crop conditions are likely to slip lower here over the next couple weeks rather than uh, gain, just due to the fact that the moisture profile here over the next couple weeks does not look to provide much precipitation for those regions. Switching gears here, let's talk a little bit about the uh, reports coming out on Tuesday. We've got the acreage projections and we also have the quarterly grain stocks. In the acreage projections, we've talked about this a little bit. Last year, acreage was 90.6 million acres here for corn and, uh, and soybeans had 83.7. You'll notice between Landworth, Informa, and Farm Futures Magazine, both or all three of those are expecting acreage to increase here uh, for soybeans. Uh, Landworth coming out a little shyer than both Informa and Farm Futures Magazine. Uh, Landworth expecting 85.5 million acres. The bottom line here, soybeans has been unable to mount that 20-day and 50-day moving average that we've been talking about. It looks as though uh, this report anticipation for higher acreage here for soybeans is making people a little bit jittery. It made it very difficult for soybeans to show any sort of positive trade action here today, closing down on the day. You'll notice corn here, uh, expectations are for, to shed about a couple million acres. Uh, Landworth's uh, pegging corn acreage uh, to be somewhere around 88.2, and Forma's thinking somewhere around 88.5, and Farm Futures Magazine somewhere around 88.34. We'll have to see, but what we do know is that if the USDA comes out and surprises the market, we'll have increased volatility. The question that I have to producers out there is will you be available to capitalize on it if it presents an opportunity to market some grain in a profitable area? Uh, I would say if you do not feel like you'd be able to reach out and capitalize on a quick market move, consider 
uh, at least uh, whether or not futures trading or options trading is right for you. Uh, I know a lot of producers out there do use futures and options uh, to try and minimize risk. But of course, when you do trade in the futures market, there are substantial risk of loss. And, uh, and, and you may have a situation, of course, where you get in a liquidity crunch. But for, for producers out there, uh, you know, puts are a great strategy, especially going into these sort of reports. Short dated puts uh, are, are fantastic use uh, of, of options uh, to minimize that downside risk. Uh, if the market was to come out and uh, and say peg soybeans uh, up over 87 million acres. So uh, the concern here, of course, is that perhaps uh, we get a high uh, soybean acreage number and we see soybeans move lower simply because the amount of soybeans coming out of South America and then if we have this amount of acreage going in or, or greater uh, could lead to a very, uh, a, a very whole, whole lot of selling here. Uh, on Tuesday. But of course, you know, obviously if the USDA comes out with something a little different, uh, maybe on the lower side, maybe we'll get a little bit of a pop. We'll have to see uh, what the USDA does, but these are the expectations. Quarterly grain stocks here, corn expected to come in right around 7.609 billion bushels with a range between 7.459 and 7.9. That was the average analyst guess uh, range that we saw there. This is a poll by Reuters. Uh, it's about eight analysts, I believe. Uh, soybeans uh, came out with an average guess of 1.346, uh, and we had wheat with 1.140 billion bushels. Those are the expectations for the quarterly grain stocks numbers. We'll see how those pan out. Before we get into uh, the, the close here, uh, let's talk about the cash markets. What you'll see is that corn really unchanged on the week on average. We did some, see some weakness on that Ohio River area. On average, the river markets really did very little. Uh, we did see a little bit of a bump down in, uh, down in the, the Gulf. Uh, and, and we also saw barge rates decline a little bit, but just not enough here to really do anything for basis uh, throughout the country. When you look at uh, soybeans, though, that's where we saw a pretty sizable movement. We were up two cents. This is the first time we've seen a basis improvement here for soybeans in six weeks. You'll notice along the river, it was very positive. Along the Gulf, uh, we were up about seven cents at the Gulf. And, uh, and, and you'll notice up along that Illinois River and the Mississippi River, uh, that area has improved in basis as well. It's very interesting to see the Gulf pop basis so much because export sales were very, very positive this week with a number of different buyers from Indonesia, uh, Germany. Uh, we saw uh, China involved. So a lot of different countries getting involved buying U.S. beans here in a time when you'd expect these bean sales to really start tapering off. We haven't seen that, uh, so it's going to be interesting to see uh, if this will help support the market down the line. Other than that, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. If you have any questions about what I was talking about, give us a call. The number is 877-472-4607. If you're wondering whether or not Grain Hedge is right for you, if you trade futures and options at a full-service brokerage or at another place where you're spending more than $7 commissions per side, and you want to be able to view live quotes on your mobile phone, you want to be able to have a, a platform on your desktop to be able to do your own research, look up option premiums, and, uh, and look up uh, uh, strategies to help protect you during the marketing year, give us a call or take a 14-day free trial at grainhedge.com. The top right-hand corner, just click on that 14-day free trial, put in your name, number, uh, we'll get a demo over to you and we'll give you a personalized one-on-one -on -one walkthrough. If you want to do that before the Tuesday reports, it'll be interesting to watch these things trade live in reaction to those USDA reports expected out at 11 o'clock Central Standard Time. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday.